What's up everybody, my name is Sofer, and today we will be building an epoxy desk. That's right, uh, as you can see, it's one of those stand-sit desks. Um, I made it out of the usual, um, a good substrate, some concrete to the substrate, epoxy, um, used a little bit of paint, not too much, it's mostly just uh, pearlescent pigments and a bunch of other crazy stuff that I found along the way. So I will leave links to all of those in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so first things first, you're gonna need a set of desk legs if you want to build a desk. And you're also going to need some Medex. It has to be Medex because plywood and other things will actually absorb moisture and the epoxy on the top might actually start to peel away from, from the wood. So you want to use Medex, it doesn't absorb water, and for the life of me, I can't find the footage of me putting together the, the table legs. But here is the, uh, the Amazon page for them. Um, the link will be in the description as always. So once you have your table legs all fully built, as well as your countertop, you're going to want to build um, some one inch strips as you see me doing here. You'll then just glue or nail them onto the outside, create a little bit more of a lip for your desk instead of it just being a flat board. Before you start nailing and gluing, however, there is one important thing you should do and that is measure out where you don't want there to be an edge. For example, my controller for raising and lowering is actually indented into the, the one inch strip as well as in the back, I cut out areas for the cables like the power cable to go in and out of. So if you do want to cut out some of the edge, now is the time to do it because it is damn near impossible later on. Speaking of damn near impossible. So as you can see, we use Gorilla Glue because uh, the uh, brad nailer just wasn't quite working for us. And after you're done scraping the glue off, uh, I'm gonna play the disclaimer card. Yes, yes, I know. Some family bought a kit from iCoat. So it comes with adhesion promoter, the concrete, the epoxy. It uh, doesn't come with any of the pearlescent pigments, but we do have this stuff. I'm sure that you can also just use normal concrete things. I think that's why the disclaimer's coming in, but here's how I did it at least. Alrighty, are you ready to rapid fire through this? 50% adhesion promoter and 50% water diluted in a bottle. You spray it on, you don't let it dry. So you wipe it down with a grout sponge or a damp towel. It should leave a nice sheen. It allows the concrete to bond to the Medex. Your next step will be your brush coat. Basically just little bits of concrete that will stick to the adhesion promoter and then allow other concrete to stick to that. So the ratio for that is two to one, two parts concrete to one part water. You usually apply it with a paintbrush, just slap it on there and be sure to get the edges. Once your brush coat is completely dry, then it is time to do the edges. Your edge coat will consist of four to one, four parts concrete, one part water. It's a very thick, thick solution. Uh, you basically just apply that to the edges. If you wanted to do chiseled edges, now's the time to uh, get, get funky with it. I just went for a straight across, straight across edge, basic and easy. Just allow that to set up for a minute and then you can play with it once it's a little more tacky. So you can sand it and add some indents or you know file off the top edge because too much on the top will just make it a pain in the butt later on. So. You can play with a little bit as it's setting up. So I'm not gonna lie with the concrete, there's a lot of waiting for it to dry. But now once, once it's all dry or relatively hard, the next coat will be your trowel coat, your top coat. That will be a mixture of three to one. It's called the trowel coat because you'll probably want a decent sized trowel. Basically you mix it on, slap it on there and you want to level the surface to match your edges. So if you have a little high edge, you wanna fill that in. You could also repeat the trowel coat again, so do two trowel coats if you wanted it perfectly smooth. But I mean, I'm just building a desk and I don't really care that much because I'm gonna have a keyboard monitor and a whole bunch of other stuff on it, so yeah. Are you getting tired of waiting for concrete to dry yet? I know I sure am. Once it's 100% dry, it will have to be painted. Whoa, 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 hold up, stop the video, stop the video, just for a second. 
One important thing I forgot to mention is once it's nice and dry and looking like this, you should sand the top of it because there's still going to be little bumps unless you are a master with the trowel. So do a quick sanding and then paint it so you don't have to paint it and then sand it if you catch what I mean. Uh, I recommend painting it black because nothing will show through it, no color, so it is honestly the best color for underneath. You can do this with a brush or a roller as long as there's not too much texture. I just so happen to have an HLBP gun sitting around, so I spray painted it. Speaking of spray paint, you could also do some funky little veins in it or some nice lines that might show through in the end. Uh, I just quickly gave it a light dusting and you can't even tell that I did it. So there you go. All right, now it's actually time for the fun stuff. I have a little bit of eye coat countertop epoxy, some eco epoxy, as well as some pearlescent pigments. These I got from Dip Your Car Canada, which ships from Florida. I got Baller Gold Micro Flakes, Indigo Metallic Micro Flakes, C1 Color Shift Pearls, and CX399 Color Shift Pearls. I also ordered some things off of SolarColorDust.com. This place is extremely cool if you're into building weird little projects. Uh, I managed to grab myself some invisible blue and invisible yellow fluorescent pigments. Basically, you shine a black light on it and it will glow. It's really cool stuff. And some chameleon glitter uh, in a create your own bundle pack. That's all of these. Solar color dust was also nice enough to throw in some of this holographic glitter, the Envy stuff, as well as a little sticker. So thanks, guys. And of course, no project would be complete without a trip to the dollar store to pick up a couple of measuring cups as well as a electric stir paddle would be extremely handy versus using popsicle sticks because some of the epoxy doesn't want to mix thoroughly and that has to be mixed thoroughly. One thing I just completely grazed over in this last clip was this mysterious bag of powder. That is glow in the dark pigment so yes the whole desk kind of glows in the dark now. Here are the colors, I don't know where I got it from, it was just in the kit that my family sent me. Since the holographic glitter was actually a larger size, I decided to just sprinkle it and blow it across the table so it would be more of an underlying glitter rather than actually mixed in with the epoxy. And no, you can't grind it down. <laughs> Once I had a nice base of glitter, it was then time to mix up some epoxy. I used the formula, uh, one cup equals roughly two square feet. That is not the case, however. I was a little shy, so I would say the formula is close, but not 100% accurate. The first layer of epoxy is what's called a flood coat, because you're trying to flood the entire canvas, if you will. You want to make sure that it drips over the edges so they get an even color, at the same as your surface, as well as leveling out any indentations in your countertop, or desk, or canvas, or whatever. smaller projects like this you can use a paintbrush to sort of pull the epoxy around and with the metallics it actually leaves interesting little swirl designs in it if you're into that sort of thing but be sure to use a higher quality paintbrush because the epoxy will pull the bristles out once you're done pouring and painting you can take a butane torch or any kind of torch really and just sort of skim the surface and it will pop all the little bubbles that are coming to the surface and so right about now is when my camera battery died, and time was of the essence, so I couldn't really swap that over. I needed to pour the second coat, which was exactly the same as the first coat, except it was using the secondary colors, and I wanted to pour those on top to make a wet-on-wet -wet technique so the colors blended, so it didn't look like they were sitting on top. I should also tell you about the Keep It Simple Stupid acronym, or KISS for short. 
I should have stopped here, because right now the desk isn't too busy and it still looks nice. I still have to add so many more pigments that it just got a little too crazy, so if you're planning to build one of these, just keep it simple. Next, I added my fluorescent pigments. They're a very chalky consistency in the epoxy, so I tried to hide them a little bit with uh, the indigo blue and the balder gold for the second coat of veins. And I'm not gonna lie, for the second coat, the baller gold ended up looking like butterscotch. After it was all said and done and the epoxy still a little tacky, I walked around with some of those Envy sparkles and just blew them off of a spoon across the entire thing. So now we're pretty much done. I'm very happy with the way it's turned out. There's only one thing left and that is another final flood coat just to seal in everything and sort of level out the highs and lows. This is where it is absolutely essential that you have the giant mixer because I've noticed that I didn't mix it quite thoroughly and I do have a couple of soft spots. Also, it takes longer to cure if you don't mix it as thoroughly. So definitely use your electric mixer that I was talking about earlier. And this is also where I mixed in my glow-in-the-dark pigments. So the entire top of the desk glows. Once your desk is starting to set up and getting fairly tacky, you can take a razor blade and skim the bottom edge and cut the drips off. I unfortunately got to mine a little bit too late and I couldn't manage to get them off, but it's totally fine because I like actually feeling the drips, so to each their own. All right, so once that's dry, you can take your epoxy desk and assemble it to your legs. I mean, as far as it goes, I think it's very busy, but also pretty cool. Uh, one regret I have is that I didn't get the edges good enough. I should have had more epoxy for the edges, but I was scraping the bottom of the barrel as it is. If there is anything that I forgot to mention in this video, I will be sure to leave a comment and pin it in the comment section. It'll just be a list of all the things that I forgot to do, but it'll be as it comes to me. As always, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you did enjoy. It helps me out with YouTube analytics and all that fun stuff, and have a good one. Peace.